Is the ICT concept draw on liquidity the missing key for you finally becoming profitable? Well, in this video, I'm going to reveal two steps to figure out what a draw on liquidity really is to hopefully help you become more profitable. And there's also a lot of people who don't use a draw on liquidity because they think it doesn't suit their trading style, but it will for 99% of you guys out there. Now, let me just show you some few examples of where a draw on liquidity is necessary. Right here, we can identify that price is trading lower, meaning the bias is bearish. So we want to take bearish trades, such as this one right here, where price has just traded up within a premium and we have a fair value gap. But the one thing we're missing here is where should price draw towards and where should price reverse? As we know, at some point, price got to reverse. Now, the way we can figure out these two crucial parts within trading is by using a draw on liquidity, which I will explain in just a minute. But let's just see what will happen if we were bearish but didn't have a draw on liquidity in this trade entry right here. We can see that price just traded higher and then traded lower. And I will come back to this example and explain why price did that. The way we can find out what a draw on liquidity is, is by going over these two steps I mentioned before, which I will talk about in just a minute. And the last one is either going to make or break this ICT concept. So stay tuned for that. But the first step is identifying where draw on liquidity is. And there are mainly four places where price is mostly drawn towards. And the first one is equal highs. And if you guys didn't catch what a draw on liquidity is, it is basically where we would anticipate price to reach for. Now back to the equal highs. So if you have been trading retail concepts before discovering ICT concepts, you may already know what equal highs are in a different way we ICT traders use it. So in simple terms, equal highs are literally what the name says, equal highs. And the reason this is a one quality is because retail traders see this area of resistance. So there's going to be placed stop losses above equal highs, meaning smart money is going to look at this as a drawn liquidity. A chart example of this would be right here. So we can see that we have these two highs and they are relatively close to each other, meaning they are relative equal highs. And there is a difference between equal highs and relative equal highs. So relative equal highs, as I just mentioned before, is when the highs are relatively close to each other, such as this example right here. But when they are equal highs, they are at the same area. So something like this right here. This right here would look like equal highs. And this is going to be a strong draw on liquidity, as I mentioned before, because retail traders are going to see this as a form of resistance, meaning they're going to short at this area and put their stop losses above the relative equal highs. So then smart money is going to target these equal highs. The next draw on liquidity is data highs. And recently I've seen this being very effective as price 90% of the time return to these data highs. Now data highs are formed when we have news and price makes a high or low. For example, let's say we have 8.30 news releasing then we would like to see price make a high or low. Then we would utilize that high or low as a draw on liquidity. Now for a chart example, you can see right here at 8.30, price created this high. And we can see price instead of immediately going up into this high, we left it up there for a while, actually for two whole days. And that's what I mean by price is going to return to these data highs. And we usually see these data highs being formed within the 8.30 to 8.35 range or when the news are occurring. For example, the example I just showed you on the 15 minute time frame, that was actually right here at 8.30 that the high was created. And then from there, we saw that price just move lower. And usually we see with the data highs that price right after creating them or just in the AM session reaches the data high. But then if price leaves the data high and does not reach it within the AM session, we usually see it being targeted in future sessions or maybe the PM or lunch session. The next draw on liquidity is low resistance liquidity. And low resistance liquidity is a bit different from the other draw on liquidities. As we find low resistance liquidity at trend lines, because same with eagle highs, retail traders see low resistance liquidity as a form of resistance. 
So then there's going to be put stop losses at low persistence liquidity, meaning smart money is going to target the stop losses. For example, you can see here that we have built up some low resistance liquidity as we can draw this trend line. And when we can draw this trend line, we know there's probably going to be retail traders which have put their stop losses in this area, meaning smart money is going to target these highs. And we can see price went a bit lower and then from there starting to move higher, reaching this low resistance liquidity. And we usually see this low resistance liquidity being targeted in future price action or immediately after they got created. The last draw on liquidity is probably the most important one. Now you guys may already know what internal and external range liquidity is, but if you don't know what it is, then check out the video I made about external and internal range liquidity. But if you do know what external and internal range liquidity is, then you also know when price reached internal range liquidity, then external range liquidity is going to become the draw on liquidity. And if price moves from external, then internal range liquidity is going to become the draw on liquidity. And this external and internal range liquidity trick is so important because the market is always seeking either external or internal range liquidity. A chart example of this would be right here. So we can see that we have this high. And this high is considered as external range liquidity. Then price moves lower into this fair value gap which is considered as internal range liquidity. So now that price is delivering from this Favelli gap, we would anticipate the external range liquidity to become the draw on liquidity. We can see price moves higher, but instead of running out this external range liquidity, we create equal highs. And this high right here is actually a data high, which I will show you on the lower time frame in just a minute. Then price moves lower, into this fair value gap again, and also this short-term internal range liquidity. So now price is delivering from two internal range liquidity, and this should become the drawn liquidity, as we both have equal highs, external range liquidity, and data highs right here. So this is a very strong and significant draw on liquidity. So then price is delivering from this fair value gap, and we can see within around two days, price reaches the external range liquidity and the data highs. On the lower time frame, you can actually see that this was the example that we talked about before when discussing the data highs, as this was the 830 data high right here, and that was combined with this external range liquidity on the higher time frame. So we saw a price move lower, reaching this internal range liquidity and a higher time frame for a value gap. From there, then moved higher, reaching the data highs and the external range liquidity. Now that we know the basics of what a draw on liquidity is, we can implement it to this next step, which will make it 10 times better. And this could even be the key for you finally becoming profitable. You must pay attention now, because this can become complicated very quickly. Remember that I said external and internal range liquidity was the last draw on liquidity. Well, there's one more draw on liquidity, which is better than all of them. But first, let me talk about the second step. Second step is combining. And the way we can do that to perfectly suit your trading style is by practicing. And I know this sounds very boring, but if you look for each draw on liquidity I just mentioned in the market and analyze which one works best with your trade setup or just which one you see the market draw towards the most, then you can become a way better trader as you know how to identify where price is going. But there is also another way, and that is simply using all the draw on liquidities instead of just using one, because then you will get more places where you could be anticipating price to draw towards. And on top of that, more trade opportunities will be offered. But to do that, we need the last draw on liquidity. The last draw on liquidity is session highs and lows, and specifically London highs and London lows. And these session highs and lows usually get targeted within the AM session. As you can see right here, price manipulated higher, sweeping buy side liquidity, and then immediately after doing that, made a reversal targeting the London lows. And if you move up to the high time frame, you can see that price usually is in a sub targeting the London highs or lows within the AM session, such as right here, price targeted the London lows. Down here, price also targeted the London lows. And then after the PM session, we targeted the London highs. And if we move a bit further down here, we can see price then moved higher within the AM session. And then in the PM session, we reached the London highs. 
So price within these kill zones usually target other session highs and lows, or just in general ends up targeting a draw on liquidity. Remember when I talked about the Favoli gap not working in the start of the video because we needed a draw on liquidity? Well, the solution here was actually if we look closer, we had equal highs. So it would make more sense for a price reaching these equal highs than respecting a Favoli gap that's within a premium. So that's why price moved up to these equal highs. But if you also look closer and turn on the kill zones, you can see that we had London lows. And price also later on in the kill zone reached these London lows. So we could see in the start of the kill zone, price manipulated, reached equal highs, and then started distributing lower, reaching a more significant draw on liquidity, which in this case was the London lows. Thank you so much for watching, but if you don't have any trading strategy, then it is going to be difficult for you getting profitable using a draw on liquidity, as we need the other fundamentals too, so watch this video right here.